Hi guys. Now I wrote this song because I want to write a song with a woman's name in it. And this name, uh, Shanique, was not too uncommon from where I come from. So, here we go. Crazy dancer, yeah, you've been around my way. Shipwrecked in my crib down on Avenue A. But I gotta be a leaving girl, and that's the way it's gotta stay. See, Hector wants his money. And now it's time to pay Ayo Shaniqua When I said I loved you I Don't believe me girl Cause I'm a liar Ayo Shaniqua I don't need your drama You got me cornered Just like a tiger The last few days I thought you might have left with me You like my jokes, girl And you never touch my weed And for all that loving And them slamming rice and beans It comes down to I don't love you, girl As much as you do me Ayo, Shaniqua When I said I loved you Don't believe me, girl Cause I'm a liar Ayo Shaniqua I don't need your drama They got me cornered Just like a tiger Well, I'm packing my things And I'll be leaving soon You know them boys is a lazy girl But you best be out by noon Ayo Shaniqua I never wanted this for you Ayo, Shaniqua when I said I loved you I Don't believe me Cause I'm a liar Ayo Shaniqua I don't need your drama They got me cornered Just like a tiger Ayo Shaniqua So we've got Huey Morgan with us on Secret Sessions. Good How to you see doing, you, Very Pleasure good. to have you it's here. Good to be here. Uh, so firstly, uh, you performed a track for us, Shaniqua. Yeah, Shaniqua, one of my favorite songs on the record, uh, just because uh, I wanted to tell a story, and I wanted to write it with a woman's name in it. I'm like, you know, Peggy Sue's been taken, and Donna's been taken, and Mary Jane's been taken. So it's not uncommon for women in New York to have the name Shaniqua. Right. And when I played it live for the first time, I kind of explained that to the crowd, and they thought it was the funniest thing they've ever heard. But Apparently, there are not a lot of Shaniquas in the UK. There should be more. But there, is, there isn't. As I said, I'd only heard of the name Shaniqua through, uh, I'm ashamed to say, an end dub song. Wow. Uh, well, at least they're spreading the word. End dubs are doing it. For yeah, you. yeah, yeah it's nice. It's nice. And it's a song about a guy who's trying to protect his girl right. because he's in trouble with, the, with some guys. And he's trying to get her out of the house and, you know, tell him he doesn't love her when he really does. But he's just trying to do the, do the guy thing and, you know, do the manly thing about it. Uh, so you releasing your debut album, yeah, your first pretty, solo debut album, why, why now? Because uh, I got the time to do it. Yeah. yeah, I got this guitar from my wife when I was playing, yeah. and uh, every, every guitar's got uh, you know, a lot of stories in it. And I started writing these songs, I was working on one project, and I started writing songs with that guitar, and they started sounding a little different. And my friends in New York, uh, the rest of the New Yorkers, we had written songs about four years ago and recorded a couple things. And, I said, you know, this might be cool for us to do that record that we always kind of wanted to do. So we didn't think of it as a, an economic endeavor. It was just an artistic endeavor. We just wanted to make a record, right. have our boy Tim Latham work on it and produce it with me, and then have it mastered. And, you know, we each get a copy, you know, like that. So you had no intentions of releasing it, it or you didn't no, think we No, we, didn't, we had no intentions of releasing it. Yeah. And then I was doing like a little kind of thing when I was doing there with just a guitar at the, at the Slaughter Lamb in East London. And one of the, some guy from Name Records, this guy Simon, who mm -hmm. runs it, was there and he said you know you played four songs and you played four good songs 
you want to put this out? And I was like, well, okay, well, yeah, but it's going to kind of be a little bit different than actually putting out a record. You know, I'm not going to be touring it. It's going to be very limited play, playing live and stuff like that because, you know, the guys are in New York and, mm. you know, I have a family now. So I have a young son, so it's one of those things where I don't want to get on a tour bus for six weeks. So we'll want to do small places and do like three nights in a row okay. where we can kind of like get, you know, a feel for the town and also enjoy ourselves. And these guys are my friends too, so mm. I want to play with them. You know, and Frankie from The Criminals is in the band as well as on the drums and and singing and doing a lot of stuff on the record. So it's it's kind of a thing when we wanted to put it out, we realized we can do it different ways. And instead yeah. of taking... Uh, the money for the record sales for myself, I decided, you know, I'm good. You know, Scooby Snacks did pretty good. <laughs> and uh, I was going to, I'm, I'm going to give all my proceeds to uh, charities for veterans and things. I heard about this. That's fantastic. So why, why did you make that decision? Well, Other than, yeah, I mean, that's an incredibly yeah, generous thing to do. Well, I, I'm a Marine and I know uh, how it is to be put in some harm's way and make that decision to do that. Mm. And I think uh, for the most part, uh, you know, the government's doing what it, what, it, what it can, but private charities are actually picking up a lot of the slack. Yeah. And I think that's where they need money. So if I can do anything to help out some guy getting, you know, back into the world okay. Because mm. they're coming back with a lot of physical injuries that you can see and a lot of injuries you can't see. Mm. And, you know, it's it's hard for a Marine to ask for help. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if they can find a place that they feel safe among other Marines or other, other servicemen that are willing to help and, and you know, listen to them and, and kind of understand them because it's a different kind of brotherhood, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's a different kind of way of thinking. You mm -hmm. know, you're doing it for your, your bro right next to you, not necessarily the whole big picture. So sure. when something really bad happens and, and you have to get shipped home, you need some time and you need somebody who understands and has been there. So I think, you know, giving the money to those charities can help. Although it's a solo album, you said you sort of collaborated with a lot of people. Yeah, when, when, when the solo thing, it was, it was kind of like, it, it was solo to the extent that I wrote this, most of the songs myself. but. Mm -hmm. Uh, the guys in the band are all friends of mine have been for 20 years and we all play in a blues band called the Tangiers Blues Band mm. in New York and I play uh, lap steel in that band and that's how Danny Clinch got involved he's the harmonica player and you know King and Chris and Pete Levin who plays with Blind Boys Alabama plays organ with them we were all playing together so I figured I want to get those guys because they know what they're doing so when I needed a keyboard part I sent it to Pete Levin didn't even have to ask him what to play mm. he just sent me back perfect perfect and the same thing with all the other guys. And then, you know, Tim and I decided to go through it and mix it. And, and everything kind of came out really sounded really good. Yeah. And we were kind of really impressed with it. And we still, at this point, didn't know if it was really going to come out. And then we realized it was. So a lot of the songs on it are kind Did of personal. Did that change how you were, well, how it, you were I, writing? Yeah, well, because I, I, I finished writing. So it was right. one of those things that I got kind of caught. I caught myself out there. Okay. And I'd, I'd gone into, like, subject matter that was really personal to me and really was touched my heart. And I didn't mm. think other people aside from my friends would understand it because they didn't know me so uh, yeah I listen to the record sometimes like mm. you know I mean there's one song on there that's really personal about my dog dying right. you know and and it's called she's gone and I can't listen to that you know it's like one of those yeah. things yeah but you know there's other songs that I think are important uh, about veterans affairs you know and and just you know just about kind of like uh, situations you find yourself in in life you know right. that that are universal you know that you have to be of a certain age to understand i guess yeah. or a certain amount of experience you know okay i imagine my confession would be uh on this record i think like i said before in the interview that i i actually spoke about things that um uh, i didn't filter myself and a lot of times when we were doing fun of criminals records i'd filter myself because i knew people would hear it like we were making records to be released and in this one i kind of just let it all hang out and open my heart and, uh, you know, for good, bad, or indifferent, there it goes. So that's kind of a confession because a lot of stuff, it's true. <laughs> you know, no, bull no bullshit, you know. Just like a tiger, Ayo, Shaniqua. Hey,